Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining the webinar. Uh, I hope you all are well uh, during these horrible times we are living, but let's do what uh, we can do to stay well and together uh, as much as possible. Okay, so today uh, I brought to you a sheet music. <clears throat> Let me show you this for the song Você by Roberto Menescal and Ronaldo Buscoli. So the, the thing is, sometimes we get a sheet music from a bossa nova song, from a book or from the internet, and sometimes we have to take a look at the sheet music to see if there is uh, any mistake on the chords or on the melody also to to figure out what kind of rhythm you are going to use to play the song right so um, let me see Diego thank you Diego for joining hi Stevie nice nice to talk with you unfortunately there is no uh, audio I would love to to hear from you but this is the way I, I can do for now. So, uh, as you can see, we have the sheet music, right? And we have the chords here, here, right? Uh, I'm, I, I'd like to talk about this because I have found uh, what we can uh, name a mistake, what, what you can say that is a mistake here in this measure. But to understand why I, I'm saying that there is a mistake here with this chord, I'm going to the beginning of the song because sometimes to understand um, if there is a mistake in the harmony, we have to understand a little bit the structure of the melody and the harmony. Okay, so <clears throat> let's take a look. Here we have the melody A and F sharp. And here we have a D major 7 chord. Uh, everything is okay here because the F sharp is the third of the chord. The A note, this note, oops, I'm sorry, this note. Oh, I thought I could. Okay, this note is the fifth of the chord. This note is the sixth of the chord. And again, the fifth of the chord. So we can, we can tell that. In this measure, we have uh, um, a chord note or chord tone, chord tone, dissonance, and chord tone. Okay, everything is okay. Here, you can see that the structure is the same. We have the seventh of the chord. G7 uh, has the following notes G, B, D, F, and the ninth, which is D, right? So this is the seventh, this is the ninth, this is the um, third and ninth again, right? Moving forward, uh, just uh, pay attention because I'm, I'm always selecting the measures with the same structure on the melody. We have a half note, eighth note, quarter note, and eighth note, right? This measure is the same as this one. You can see F sharp, A, B, A. It's the same, right? Uh, then here, E minor 7. The B note is the fifth of the chord. D is the seventh. E is the octave. And again, the seventh of the chord, right? Here, B flat is the minor third, fifth, sixth and fifth so we have a chord tone a dissonance a chord tone right but now here we have a problem because the first note is an a note right the a is the minor third of the chord which is okay no problem but here we have dissonance chord tone dissonance which is the opposite we had, for example, in this measure. And when you sing and play this chord 
in this measure, we have the minor 7 chord, right? The first uh, note of the melody is A, then we have this D, E, and D, right? So, what's the, what's the problem here? In the chord, I have a C sharp note, and I have to sing a D note twice, right? So, while I'm playing this chord, I have the C sharp, and I'm singing the D note, so the result is this. The C sharp on the chord, the D on the melody. Right? So this is a huge dissonance. Okay? A huge dissonance. So when we get the, the notes of F sharp minor 7 and we add the D note, somehow, actually, we have a D major chord. So, I would change this chord to a D major over F sharp instead of playing an F sharp minor 7. Because when I sing the melody, I'm sorry, pay attention. There is a friction between the chord and between what I'm singing. If I change the chord, I have this everything is okay, right? So I'm going to change this chord to D sharp, I'm sorry, D over F sharp, this way, right? It was the, the, the only mistake I have found. You know, when I say mistake, uh, this is complicated because many people will not, will not say that this is a mistake. In my opinion, this is a mistake. I think it's much better if you play this chord while you are singing the song because it helps us to sing uh, in a more, uh, more comfortable way, okay? So, uh, let me see this, if I'm not wrong, this situation repeats. No, it doesn't. Okay, so now we have found a mistake and we have corrected uh, that mistake, right? Okay, great. So, next. Um, does someone have uh, any questions about this procedure I did? Oh, many people. I'm sorry, uh, I don't know how... Um, Ambrosio Oliver, I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong. Paco, my friend from Brazil. <laughs> what are you doing here, man? Oh, great. Thank, thank you so much for joining this webinar. Uh, Lourdes Bilbao. Uh, thank you, Lords. Thank you, Kurt. Great to see you, them. To see you here. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm a little bit nervous again because you know I'm doing everything alone, so I have to read the comments. And I have to talk about music, and worst of all, I have to to speak English. So uh, now we we are going to let me see anyone with with your questions. Learning, Paco, no, you are not learning, Paco, uh, Paco is an amazing guitar player, he plays beautiful, beautifully the, the guitar, you know, very, and, and a very good guy, he, he's amazing. So, uh, now, uh, as you probably know, we have some uh, basic rhythms uh, to play bossa nova, right? The first one... Oops, wait a minute. Here, okay, the chord, the, the, the rhythms, okay? So the first one, the, I, I think is the uh, most basic rhythm for uh, Bossa Nova, the number one, right? And we have uh, D major seven, and in the second measure, a G major seven. I will ask you, ask you your patience to be patient because I'm going to turn off my heater here. Okay. 
Right. So we have the D major 7. Okay? And the G major 7. This rhythm, for those who are not familiar with this, we, we have to play this way. One, two. One and two. The simplest one. The rhythm number two is very similar to the one, to the first one. The only thing is that we have to start playing the rhythm at the syncopation point in the previous measure, right? Uh, and we have this one, two e and a one and two e a one. And obviously, we, uh, as you can see, we have to change the chord before the downbeat, right? At the syncopation point, at the end of the previous measure, always this way, right? Finally, we have this rhythm, which actually is the rhythm of samba. One of the rhythms we can use to play samba, right? This is a little bit more complicated because uh, we have two measures that uh, we use to, to write the rhythm, right? The, the, the rhythm is composed by two measures and in this case we have this one, two, e and the one I'm sorry, <laughs> mistake, my bad one, two, e and the one, e, a two Now, by comparing this, uh, these rhythms with the song, how can we say which of those rhythms would be, so to speak, the best to play the song? Someone guess somewhat? One, two, or three? Obviously, we can play uh, the song with any of uh, those rhythms, right? Uh, mistakes repeats in measure 28. Wait a minute. Uh, thank you, Diego. Let me take a look. 28, 28, 28. Let's see. Measure number 10, 28. Oh. oh, yes, you are right. Thank you so much. Yes. We have D over F sharp. Thank you so much. So back to the rhythms. Which one do you think is the best to play the song? No one? Hello Mike, thank you for joining. Great, great to see you. Okay. So, let's take a look at the melody. The melody starts, which actually is a pickup measure, right? We have less than half of the measure with notes. This is called pickup measure, right? And we have this note of the melody, the F sharp note, uh, sung before the downbeat. But here we have the, 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 the C sharp note at the downbeat. When we take a look at these rhythms, this rhythm does the same thing. We, have, we are playing the chord at the syncopation point. Yes, Shelley, Shelley said that rhythm number two. Yes, we can use the rhythm number two. I, I will play a little bit with uh, all those rhythms so you can listen to the, 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 the results, right? But the number, uh, I'm sorry, the number three, see, we, we start playing the rhythm at the syncopation point and on the second measure, we are playing all the, the, the chord notes 
add the downbeat. It's the same we have here. Syncopation point, downbeat. Syncopation point, C. Syncopation point, downbeat. Again, syncopation point, downbeat. All the time. All the time. So, if you play using this, the first rhythm, we have this. Uh, let me see. That's okay, no problem. Playing with the second example, the rhythm which we start playing before the downbeat, we have this. I'm sorry. It works also, right? And finally, playing with uh, the third rhythm, which is the rhythm, uh, rhythm of samba. Difficult word this with this one rhythm. Oh gosh. So we have this. It works also, right? So uh, I would choose the, the third one. But as you can see, you can use all of them. There is no problem. It's a matter of it's a matter of taste, right? Uh, the 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 rhythmic pattern you are going to choose to play the song, right? <coughs> okay. Third thing, we can take a look at to see uh, if we can change something to get uh, a better result at the end of the process, right? So now I will. I will uh, turn on the fretboards here, okay? So, we can make a D major chord in several different positions on the fretboard, right? Here, which is the same as here, same notes, right? Here, we can play also this one, right? So, uh, it, 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 it is also a matter of taste, but, you know, uh, for example, if I play this one, right, and then the G9 in this position, and so somehow I get this melody on the top of the chords, F sharp going to B, right, F sharp, B. If I play the D major 7 this way, I'm sorry. If I play this way, right? I'm playing D, F sharp, A, and C sharp. I get this melody. Right? So, uh, I'm saying that I would choose the second one. So, I would do this change to this one okay this chord this chord position actually right this one is fine for me I would change this one also right <coughs> I'm sorry here uh, in, in, in this in this point we could add a ninth on this chord because the G sharp here is the ninth of this chord instead of playing the F sharp minor 7 we could play uh, F sharp minor 9 you know like this but sometimes we don't need to put on the chord in the chord the note you are singing from the melody right the difference is subtle 
Uh, for example, in, in this part we have this. Or this. Or Next chord, we could change the B7 flat 9. If I choose to play the F sharp 9 instead of F sharp minor 7, I'm sorry, F sharp minor 9 instead of F sharp minor 7, I would probably change the next chord instead of playing this, I would change to B7 flat 13. Why? Again, because the melody I get at the top of the chord. If I play this, I get. G sharp and after that I play this and I get the E note but then I would probably have to change the next chord instead of playing because now I have the the G at the top right then maybe let me see the melody yes I, I could play maybe the E minor 9 so at the end of the uh, of this part I would get the melody G sharp, ninth of the F sharp minor seven, G flat thirteen of B, and then F sharp, ninth of E minor. Okay, <coughs> but but I I will not change those chords. Okay, uh, here we have something which is there is no problem here, but. Let's take a look at the, the, the at one thing. G on the bass, right? Then C on the bass, then F sharp on the bass, then F on the bass. If we play this C9, we are we are breaking the, 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 the progression of the basses, right? If we play G minor 7, then C9, then F sharp, then F natural, then E, maybe, maybe we could change this chord, this C9 chord here to a C9 over G which we can write uh, I'm sorry as a G minor 6 why? because G minor 6 and C7, C9 over G sounds the same, right? We have C9, okay, and C9 over G. This is a G minor 6 also. I, I will not talk about harmony because there are implications um, when we choose the name of the chord, but I, I will not talk about this, uh, not today, okay? So, we could maybe change this. So, instead of getting this from the G minor 7, Okay, from the, the, the measure number uh, 12. Instead of getting this bass line, I will get this. I'm sorry. So I, I, I don't break the, the, the bass line. Right? Finally, this A7 flat 9, <laughs> the, the software uh, gave me this already, you know, but this, this is too, too complicated. Uh, fret number 11, no, we are not using, we are not going to use this, um, this uh, chord position. I have already prepared, no, I'm sorry, I didn't, I haven't. I would probably use this this chord. Right? This one. Instead of this one. I'm sorry. Which is this one okay <clears throat> uh, 
now the, the song starts kind of repeating the melody, right? Again, but uh, this is the, the part A from the beginning until the measure number 17. This is the part A. And here we have the part B. And you can see that the melody is the same at the beginning, right? Now, here we have uh, the melody changes, right? So, okay, we can use the, 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 uh, this chord, right? This D major 7 chord, but we can also see if we can add one more dissonance to the chord, right? Uh, this is important. Uh, we have the triad, right? Root, third, and fifth of the chord. The first dissonance we usually add to a chord is the seventh. The second dissonance we usually add to the chord is the ninth or the thirteenth, right? So, maybe I would choose changing this chord to a G major 9. Like this. Let me see the fretboard. Yes, it's right. Okay. But now I have added one more dissonance to this chord. What about this? Maybe I could add the 13th and instead of playing a G9, play a G713, right? And that's what, what I'm going to do. 7, 13. Let me see the fretboard, yes. So, instead of getting this... I will get this... Just to, to get something different, you know, a little change. Here the same. D major ninth. Okay. Uh, okay, A minor seven. A on the melody. Uh, it's not a good idea to, to add the ninth because we have the a on the melody, if we add the 9th, we are going to get a B note on the chord. Although we can do that, but I will, I will keep this chord unchanged, okay? Um, this is okay, no problem with this chord, but um, let me see the melody. I'm sorry. I, I I have sung this wrong. Maybe I would change this chord. Uh, or maybe D7 flat 9 over A. A, G sharp, G, F sharp, F natural, E, and so on, right? So I will change this chord. And this is a problem also, because if you make this chord with bass on A, what do you get? C. We have this chord. If you change the bass to A, somehow it looks like a A diminished 7, right? So you can sometimes see this chord written as a D7 flat 9 over A or a A diminished 7, which is the same actually, right? Uh, let me correct the fretboard. Oops.
I will get rid of this and put the A on the base, right? Just to keep uh, the, the, the baseline A, A, G sharp, G, uh, G again, F sharp. You know, here, let me see. Oh, okay, we have this. can also here the same we can make this chord with bass on G or we can write this G minor 6 right which is the same as C9 over G okay then D uh, over F sharp F diminished 7th E minor A7 flat 9 and D major 7 so those would be probably the chords I would use, the, 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 the chord positions I would use to play the song, right? So let me see if I can play, fit the whole sheet music on the screen. Okay, so now I will play the song, right? Using the rhythm of Bossa Nova. I will try to sing the melody because I'm not so familiar with this melody and I will use these chord shapes, okay, this, this chord positions Gosh Okay completely wrong I'm sorry uh, I will play everything again I'm sorry uh, uh. to the questions you may have okay let me see oh how many people thank you so much everyone for joining this webinar I hope this webinar is useful uh, to you and I hope this helps understand a little bit uh, some procedures uh, we can use to get somehow a better result at the end of uh, our playing right so let me see, uh, Ambrosio Oliver is from Brazil, oh, nice, Paco Lourdes, Curti, Curti from Texas, um, Diego, Paco, Mike Bruce, thank you for joining Mike, Shelley, rhythm number two, yeah, the rhythm, the rhythm number two works also. Rafael, hello, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I hope you are uh, well too. Ross, great to see you here. 
San José, <laughs> San José, Emerson, great to see you here, Brent, from Indiana, USA, Timoth, oh, Tim, Tim, how are you doing, man, I hope you are doing well, Jack, from Orlando, great, so, please, ask your questions, uh, we have about 20 minutes uh, yet to, to finish this first meeting. Uh, by the way, I, I, I'm planning to, to, to hold another webinar next, next Monday, same time, right? Uh, I will choose a subject. Um, some people have uh, sent me emails with suggestions, some very good suggestions, but I have to think a little bit about, about, the, about those suggestions to see what would be useful for uh, most of people, okay? So, someone has any questions? Let me see if I have missed any questions here. Mm -hmm. No questions. We have two options. Maybe I am a amazing teacher, <laughs> or you are uh, too shy to ask questions. Please, any questions? There is no. Would you make a webinar about improvisation in Brazilian music? You know. Mm, the way I think of improvisation is very different, Paco. Because I, I don't think about improvisations using scales or modes or, you know, I think very differently. And I'm not, I'm not used to doing improvisations anymore, you know. When I was playing in pubs, theaters, I, I used to do improvisation a lot. I used to improv improvise a lot. But not anymore. <clears throat> we can we can tell maybe this is an, a a different approach to talk about improvisation. Maybe we can we can do a webinar about this. You know, would be inter interesting. Although many people would say, "Man, are you crazy? What are you talking about?" Man, but we we can do that. Oh, Tim, thank you so much, Tim. Brent. Uh, let me see um, what software I, I, I'm, I'm using. I'm using the OBS Studio to change, you know, when actually <laughs> I played everything, but I forgot to. I have this. Oh, now I'm bigger. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, I use the OBS Studio, but then there is some settings to do to to communicate with with the youtube channel and it it works great you know very good <clears throat> uh what software would you make a webinar yes how do you think oh uh no no problem no problem paco i will talk a little bit about this could you perhaps play throughout through slowly and we can play along, perhaps would be fun. Yeah, maybe. Uh, uh, let let let's. Uh, I will do this before uh, finish. Uh, before finishing the webinar, okay. But when you play, are you thinking chords, melody, both? Mm, kind of, you know. I would be a liar if I if I tell you that I'm looking at the melody all the time. All, all the time, you know, but most of the times I think when I am, you know, um, some time ago I used to, to play with singers here in Brazil and <laughs> when we had a sheet music to read because sometimes we don't have any sheet music, you know, you just learn the song by hearing the song and memorize the, uh, the, 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 the chords and the progressions. But when there is a sheet music, it helps a lot, you know. 
Many people think sheet music is too complicated, you know. Uh, it is, but you know, I, I, I'm always say to my students, sheet music is frozen music, you know, is you can look at the music and understand what, what is happening, you know. Uh, yeah, you know, and the, the problem is you, you are you probably know a lot of people who doesn't know how to read music and even so they are great musicians you know it's not a prerequisite i think this is the word i'm sorry you know it's not a prerequisite but uh in my opinion it it helps a lot um Diego, I, I'm sorry, who asked this question I just, just answered was Jackie. Uh, Diego, I think, bring me about the score. Oh, the, the software I used to, to write the sheet music is the Finale. It's a very common software, uh, a little expensive to be honest, but you know, it works. Some bugs, but it works. Um, yeah, well, I'm sorry, I thought you were asking about the software I'm using to, to make the, the, the webinar, to hold the webinar. Yes, to, to write music I use the Finale, okay? Uh, okay, uh, I will answer a little bit the question Paco made. Usually, when I start thinking about improvisation, first of all, I know all the notes of each chord instantly. It gave me in the past a, a huge, a huge bad time because, you know, I a lot of time ago I had lessons with a, a guitarist who used to uh, teach uh, improvisation. And he, he taught me improvisation through scales, arpeggios, you know, so modes, kind of, you have D major chord. Okay, the song is in the D major key, right? And he used to say, oh, in this case, you are going to play the first mode, which is the union of D major uh, key. Right? But now we have G9. G9, this chord doesn't belong to the D major key. This is a borrowed chord, kind of, you know. So I cannot keep playing the same scale. I would have to change the scale. In this case, very complicated because G7 is the dominant chord of C major key. So I would have to change this this is only one one uh, way to think about this i would have to change my scale to the c major scale so i start playing d major uh, scale then when i reach this chord i change the scale and again the the, the scale of uh, d major right I usually don't think this way and I will tell you why. Maybe, it, I'm not saying that it was um, my teacher fault, you know, maybe it's my fault. Uh, there was a time where I, when I could play a lot of notes, but none of those notes were the notes I would like to play. I don't know if, if I can if it's clear to you, but, but you know, when you play a lot of notes, okay, but when you listen to the results, you say, gosh, I haven't played any notes which I, I would like uh, to, to play, you know. So uh, then I, I started thinking, you know, when I, when I realized that I, I, was, I was able to play a lot of notes, but the result was bad, in my opinion. I started thinking, okay, uh, the first thing is I have to, I have to figure it out, I have to um, understand what 
improvis improvisation is. And at that time I thought, wait a minute, improvisation is playing a lot of notes or trying to make music instantly. And I thought, well, for me improvisation is trying to make music instantly. Then what I did was, uh, I, at that time I used to give lessons in a big school here in, in Sao Paulo. And I went to the library and I got, I got some songbooks. And I started doing somehow what I just did here in the, in the webinar. I started taking a look at the melody and see uh, what notes, what procedures the composer used to make the song, to write the song. And I realized that most of the time they didn't use scales, you know? So, for example, let me see just... Uh, I, I, will, I will go back to the, to the chat uh, soon. Uh, for example, this song, let me show you. To make the melody, see, the first part of the melody, here, until here actually, because this note belongs to the next measure. The chord is a D major 7, right? We have the following notes in this chord. D, F sharp, A, uh, and C sharp, right? This, those are the notes of this chord, root, third, fifth, seventh, right? Now let's take a look at this part of the, of, of, of the, of the song. A here, F sharp here, A here, B, oops, B doesn't belong to the chord, A here, C sharp here, A again, B doesn't belong again, A you can see that most of the notes he used to compose this little part of the melody, he used the notes that belong to the chord. Then I started to think, okay, if I want to improvise this way, the first thing is to look at the chord and know instantly all the notes of the chord. It gave me a hard time, believe me, believe me, because at, at, at the beginning, uh, in the beginning, I would look at the chord and see D major seven, okay, D, yes, D, D major seven has a D note, yeah, and the third is, mm, uh, oh, F sharp, yeah, fifth, A, oh, the seventh is C sharp, okay. <laughs> Thinking this way so slowly, I would never <laughs> be able to improvise, right? So uh, I got a lot of songbooks and I started studying this, like looking at the, at the, the chords and thinking about all the notes uh, those chords uh, have, like D major 7. It's, it's a little bit hard to say in English because I think in Portuguese about the, the, the notes names. But here we have D, F sharp, A, C sharp. Here we have G, B, D, F and uh, A, I'm sorry. Uh, the, same, the same notes, F sharp minus 7, F sharp, A, C sharp, E, right? All the notes. B7 fat 9, we have B, D sharp, F sharp, A and C. All the notes of the chord, E minor 7, E, G, B, D, you know, all the notes. Then I started trying to do something very, very, very simple. Without metronome, you know, without um, playback, without anything like this. I would look at the chord and think, okay, I have a D major 7. I will choose a note. Suppose I, I choose A. This is the note I'm going to play. On, uh, during this chord. Next chord, G9. Okay, I'm playing A. A is the ninth of G, G9. I could play the same note, but it, it's too lazy, right? 
I will change this. I will play G, right? Next chord, D major seven. What are the notes of D major seven? D F O oh, F sharp here. Next chord, F sharp minor seven. I would play. I ha we have the, the following notes to play: F sharp, A, C sharp, E. Oh, okay. I will play E, right? So very simple and very slowly at the beginning. But I know that it's very simple because I I told you that I will play A on the D major seven chord, G on the G nine chord. F sharp on the D major seven chord, E on the F sharp minor seven chord, right? Very simple, very simple. Okay, if I sing this way, I'm sorry. Okay, this is not song, this is not music, but what if I made this? So I started putting some, some, some kind of rhythm on those notes and I got this. realized that I will sing the E note and the next chord has D sharp so I, I sing I sung which is right I started doing this then it was a process you know it was a process uh, we can talk about this uh, in, in, a, in another uh, webinar okay Paco I hope this little explanation helps a little bit okay um okay uh, fin finale has a freebie version yes yes it has but you, you cannot if i'm not wrong you cannot uh, edit the 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 fretboard i i i, I don't there is some limitations uh, I find that I usually take the easy route of finding tabs I can read sheet music but it takes me ten times longer to translate sheet music to the fretboard oh, yes i understand yeah and you know but there is something else i would like to 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 say to you uh we we have two different approaches when you are going to read uh sheet music or we are reading the sheet music to play the song or we are reading the sheet music to learn to practice reading music. These approaches are completely different. If if I want to play the song, I can you know for example play three four measures, read three or four measures, a little part, and practice until memorize them, the, those measures. Then I move forward, uh, four more measures, four more measures. At the end, I have memorized the whole song. But it didn't um, uh, make me better, a better music reader, you know, because I read, I, I, I've, I've read a part and then I memorized it. I, I don't know how to read again, right? If you want to practice reading music, I suggest that you do the following. Play each note. You, 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 you can get rid of the rhythm. You know, you can play, for example, this sheet music. A, okay, F sharp, A, B, A. Then I, C, oh no, this is not a C natural. This is a C sharp because the key signature doesn't matter. You are not going to correct this now. You know, go ahead. A, B, A, oh, F natural, okay. A, B, A, wow, now it's a C natural, then A, B, A, F sharp, very simple this song, A, B, A, now I, I remembered, oh, this is a C sharp, 
right? A, B, A, oh, G sharp. Then we have E, C sharp, A, and G natural. So play every note, each note. If you make a mistake, don't correct yourself at that moment. Go ahead, go ahead. You see that at the end of this process, you will not have memorized the song. So you have to read again. You are practicing reading music. You are not reading the, the, the sheet music to play the song. You are using the sheet music to practice um, music reading. Okay? Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, by the way, love your video covering Pernambuco. Yes, many, many people. Uh, thank you so much for this. Uh, Zacarias Linhares is from Brazil. He asked you what my guitar is. This is a Yamaha. I will, see, I, I will say in Portuguese Yamaha NCX900R. I will tag this here. This is, a not, this is not a good guitar, okay? This is my guitar. This is not a, a, a good guitar, you know. Every guitar who has pickups, you know, this kind of thing, they are not great to play acoustically. But I'm, I'm not saying that this is a bad guitar. This, it doesn't have a huge sound, you know, just this. Uh, yes, feel the same, Paco said, F Mag, Rola Maestro, no sabia que estabas en directo, si, sí, estoy en directo, estoy aprendiendo español para hablar español con toda, toda la gente de, que habla español también, espero que un día yo pueda hablar español fluentemente para hablar con ustedes. Uh, Raghead, I, I, I'm sorry, I'm probably saying this wrong. Hello, everyone. Pierce, I'm Eric from UK. Thank you so much for joining. A bit late to this, but oh well. Yeah, you, you can watch again the, the whole webinar later, right? Paco, nice. It's very musical way to think. Yes, yes, it is. I, I, I was honest when, when I was talking about this way of thinking about improvisation, okay? Uh, how do I subscribe to your webinars? The, the webinars are free. You, every Monday, 12 p.m. São Paulo time zone. Just come and participate. It will be a pleasure to have you here. Um, Marcio the One. Hi guys, really recommend this channel. Brazilian music is worth it. Thank you so much, Marco. Marcio. Okay. Uh, like the fish, um, heck, Hade said, I have no idea what, what are you talking about. <laughs> Thank you for your reply, Renato. I will try using your device to practice reading sheet music. Yes, the, uh, all, I have, all I can say is that it works. It works. You know, the problem is that many people, I know that many times you, we are in a, in a you know, in a rush, in a, oh, I have to learn the song. Uh, I will do whatever I, 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 I need to learn that song to play that song. We have to insert, you know, this kind of study, you know, reading music in our daily uh, practice, right? Uh, Paco, I have to work now. Good work for you, man. Thank you for, for joining and it was great to talk with you. We have to talk a little bit more here in Brazil, okay? So, oh, you are in Lisboa, Portugal. Oh man, you are so fine. <laughs> great, great. We can talk about through Skype, no problem. Uh, Diego, you get the modified score. Yes, yes, you will. This is important. Uh, I will, I will create the PDF for this score, and I will send to all of you. You know. Uh, I have already the, the email address of all members. Uh, those of you who are not members on my website, just please send me an, send, send, send me an email. Uh, you, you, you have in the description my email address. Send me an email send, saying, uh, please send me the, the, the sheet music of the first webinar. It will be a pleasure for me. Okay? 
Oh, Jesse! <laughs> Good morning! Bom dia! <laughs> Jesse is another friend of mine from, uh, from Los Angeles. Okay. Guys, thank you so much for joining this webinar. I hope, I really hope this webinar was useful somehow uh, for you all. And I hope to see you next Monday, same time. Okay? Thanks so much. Bye.